Hi, my name is Gifford. Uh, Jeff Wang and I are from the Information School and the Design Use Build at the University of Washington, and we'll be talking about rule variance. This talk is inspired by the concept that variety is the specifics of life. And what I mean by that is that the context-to-context -context situations in which specific activities are carried out, uh, when solved by general software solutions, will always fall short without a little help from players who understand how to tailor their activity to fit the specific situation. When you look across a conduction of variants, you're exposed to idiosyncratic solutions that are particular, precise, and a little more perfect for the demands of the moment that it was created for. We explored how variants could teach us about this precision. The, the two cases were Hold'em and Halo 2. Hold'em is a card game where you vie against other players with the contention that the cards in your hand are better than everyone else's. You back your claim with money in the form of chips or a series of mounting stakes. Each deal of cards has up to four rounds of betting. Texas Hold'em deepens this strategy by slowly revealing a set of shared community cards in the center of the table as the round progresses. To start, we're dealt two cards privately, and we've got an ace and a six. Uh, bets are made, uh, forcing players to stay in contention or leave the round, abandoning the money that they put into the pot. So three communal cards are placed face up on the table, and these cards are called the flop, which is great for us because now we have a pair of aces to our name. Uh, betting round ensues, some players drop out, one more communal card is dealt, this is the turn. And we have even more reason to be excited because now we have three aces. Another betting round ensues to see who's still in. And one more card will be dealt publicly. Following the narrative theme, this is called the river. And probably lucky for us, another ace appears. You keep a straight face and bait the other players to stay in the game. You're kind of eyeing Peter on the left, who looks kind of excited. And he takes the bait. You match his raised bet. This forces him to prove that he's got the better hand. Showdown ensues. Looks like he's got... Two pocket kings, producing a pair and a triple, a full house. However, you use your three communal cards to produce four of a kind with the jack high card. A much rarer hand, so congratulations, you take the pot. Yeah. Well, truth be told, Poker Night is starting to get a little stale, and it's your fault. You've been playing online. <laughs> and you've gotten really good. So that last card, that last round was a kind of a throwaway. You already had a dominating stack of card chips, and you can afford to play risky with the A6 offsuit in the pocket. The game's getting a little too predictable for you. Maybe it's time to try something a little different to mix it up. Lucky for you, you have a large list of Hold'em alternatives, variants to choose from. Armed with your preferences and your friends' preferences, you, you can start planning out really exciting choices for the next poker night. What's a variant? A variant is a form differing from a standard. Omaha Hold'em offers four hold cards. Past the pineapple includes trading. Guts is a single leap into the showdown. Upside down pineapple makes, a public, makes public cards private and private cards public. And for understanding games, the lessons from such variants is especially interesting. They represent a solidified appropriation that can last for a session or two or develop longevity of its own. In the digital games industry, customized or modified games are the seedbed for popularizing and developing new genres. Blizzard's custom map for StarCraft and WarCraft can be credited with the establishment of the tower defense genre and a popular team genre called Dota. Modifications to the Half-Life engine produce the immensely popular tactical shooter named Counter-Strike. The popular team and class-based Team Fortress 2 originated as a program modification of ID Software's Quake. Though so extending beyond games to designers of customizable software, this study exposes a mindset for role-changing behavior that informs our understanding of how users appropriate systems and share those appropriations for their own needs. Texas Hold'em offers us a non-programmer's domain to explore variation in a standard card game. Halo 2 gives us a digital domain to validate this theory that we found and to explore the challenges of variant development in software. Uh, from Hold'em we collected and analyzed 81 descriptions of Hold'em variants from websites and forum posts. Our data source for Halo 2 was a wiki that a community of players used to catalog 91 variants that could be played in Halo 2's custom game sets. We analyzed the Hold'em data from a grounded approach and took the resulting theory as a basis for a thematic anal analysis of Halo 2. And here's a quick preview. Um, we found changes to the rules that were driven by necessity and community norms for problem solving that we called canned solution. Uh, we were able to apply these findings in Halo 2 and uncovered people-based solutions for playing 
playing games that the original program did not support. Starting with the shape of the data in Texas Hold'em, um, by grouping the variants according to how similar they were to each other, we found three common pairings of rules. So instead of uh, giving you two whole cards, I'll give you three or four. Sure, if I do that, I'll also add a second rule next to that, which forces you to play only a few of those cards. Or if I change the rules for community cards that are providing a, a weird shape, a cross, an elevator, you'll find this rule is usually paired with another rule that says how you're supposed to deal them out or how you're supposed to reveal them. If I change the makeup of the deck, in Spanish poker, you play with only eights to aces. We add new rules to say, well, this kind of hand beats the other one. A flush beats a full house now. And we found a lot of causal reasoning in the language for the rule descriptions, because, should, must. This led us to explain this relationship between rules as a chain of necessity. A new rule can introduce a problem in the game, and maybe the fairness of the game is compromised. And this evokes a need which another rule can be introduced to restore the, int the integrity of that variant. And in light of this respective necessity, we discovered three types of rules. Satisfying rules solve the problems and variants. Optional ones offered new possibilities without a strong tie to necessity. And spoiling rules were rule ideas that were so bad and so prevalent that it really needs to be pointed out as a terrible, terrible idea. That explains the relationship between the rules, but it didn't really explain why there are a bunch of common clusters or common pairing. They weren't the only ways to solve the problems that the rules introduced, but based on their prevalence, prevalence in the community, we interpreted these as familiar solutions to common problems, or um, what we termed canned solution. An easy to understand, off the shelf solution born of community norm. A typical problem, too many cards ruin the odds, can be solved with a typical solution, force players to discard those cards. We think that if you can find these canned solutions in any customizing community, games or otherwise, you'll expose both rough patches that the community faces and the links to which they'll go to overcome them. Just because they can doesn't mean they're simple. So people will do a lot of complicated things. So far, we've got a sense of necessity, three types of rules, and can solution. We sought to take this out to Halo 2 custom game types online to see uh, if this would validate the theory and show some insights about software. Halo 2 is a classic first-person shooter. Players accumulate score as, as in-game kills. When they die, they respawn in random places in a map, and after a predetermined amount of time, uh, the team with the most kills wins. We found 91 descriptions of custom Halo games, and asked, does the pragmatic perspective in customization apply here? What can canned solutions tell us, and in particular, how do players account for the limits of the software against what they want to play? For starters, Halo 2 offers a lot of presets for games. King of the Hill, Oddball, Juggernaut, Capture the Flag, Assault Territories. These game types have programmed win conditions, respawn locations, countdown timers, game item territories. Basically a huge menu of on and off switches that you, that you run to get the game that you want to play. And by saving game types, you can have a lot of games and share them and play them with each other. And in the data, the language uh, describing these options were accompanied with justification, ambivalence, warnings, and they all fit the three themes. But to go into a menu and change the settings only counts for two-thirds of the custom games we found. The two examples here, Zombies and D-Day, require more rules than the game software can enforce. D-Day is a reenactment of the World War II battle and expects players to only play within a fourth of the game map. They're supposed to simulate a beachfront assault against a fortified wall. However, spawn points on that map can't be narrowly defined like that. And so this is a problem because dead, sp dead players will spawn all over the map. D-Day isn't D-Day if an allied soldier or teleport to the back of the wall. Zombies is an infection game, and if you're killed by a zombie, you become one. But Halo 2 can't automatically manage this kind of team switching. When you die a human, uh, you respawn as a human. And that's not exactly a very exciting game of zombies. So players turn to what they call honor rules. Rules that players agreed to conform to, even if the com computer program does nothing to enforce it. If you spawn in the wrong location for a match in D-Day, you are honor bound not to attack anyone until you're back into the designated play area. And other players are equally honor bound not to shoot you. If you're killed by a zombie in the zombie custom game, you're honor bound to go to the player menu and select change switch teams and join the zombie horde. So problem solved. But although honor rules overcome the rigidities in the software, they create a new problem. Honor rules are easier to break than software rules. An honor rule increases the opportunity for non-conforming play. You can't stop me from breaking the rule the first time. If I spawn behind the enemy wall, I can sneak up behind everyone else and assassinate the enemy. What are you going to do about it? Or what rules are you going to employ to mitigate the problem? Here are two highlights of the types of rules that players recommended. Employ accountability. Assign a referee. Watch for evidence of rule breaking. Um, if we're playing a game that where you're not allowed to shoot anyone, and I get an achievement for a headshot, then, then that exposes my the fact that I broke a rule. Uh, or coping. Some rule changes just assume that the rules could be broken 
broken, right? that could be broken, will be broken, and they add rules to mitigate the expected damage. So here in Boomball, the solution is to leave only guns on the map that are weak. The idea is that no one is to shoot weapons, only use grenades. However, since not all people obey rules, I choose the plasma pistol as to limit the damage to kill. And certain options were simply considered too broken to mend. One world changer warned against allowing grenades in the zombies variant for how much it would ruin the spirit of the game. And perhaps a bit less of a rule and closer to a policy is about how to play is sometimes it's just a matter of booting the uncooperative uncoop players. So in this vehicle based variant, people take the opportunity to, to just play a different game that they want you to play. And so their solution is to take them out. So in summary, from our thematic analysis, we find that necessity based reasoning permeates custom games. Honorable behavior undergirds freer play. If everyone plays nice, we can accomplish some pretty fun things. There's a, almost a playground mentality in Halo custom games. Um, and trust is a people problem. So here's some closing considerations and implications. In my own study of flexibility in games, in planning for a user study to see how you know participants would change the rules in the game, there was a lot of concern about asking, Will we find people who are creative enough to change the rules of a game? Should we be uh, looking for those kinds of people? And the actual question I think that we should ask is instead of prioritizing creativity to look for variants, maybe it's more pragmatism and authority that fuels the changing of rules and, and the creation of variants. And then some find that software tailors lack systematic theories for the computer application that they customize. Um, they don't understand the guts of the system. However, in finely balanced systems like games, or where the balance is especially important to the players, there's another type of mentality that they have, which exposes a, a very systematic perspective by the end users or by the players who are aware that a single change in a rule has implications throughout the entire system. And so they're thinking about another systematic perspective of you know, the software that they're trying to change. And I guess lastly, for game remixers, if you want to support a community that does this, number one, consider how customization requires community support, where knowledge about the idiosyncrasies of the system and can solutions can be developed and shared. Two, provide data-driven feedback for custom games to inform balance. There's been studies about how to use data to improve your game, about offering data to the people who are customizing the game to see how their variant is being played out by the larger community and make the tweaks themselves. And then third, support honorable, honorable conduct, expose accountability, uh, allow different forms of sanctioning that will allow people to produce a set of social rules above your hardware rules or software rules that allow them to play in really interesting ways. And so that last one's kind of different than saying, oh, let's customize better, let's produce more options, to understand the programmer's mentality. Instead, we're talking about allowing people to bring in social support for kind of a new way of playing or their new way of playing. Um, thanks and questions.